A tale just about as old as Eagles football itself. The birds lose, and the fans give them a sign. Literally. <laughs> Two fans outside the Novacare complex this morning with signage, imploring the team to run the ball more. You may recall a similar demonstration took place during the 2017 season. Today, Nick Sirianni's asked if he saw the message and whether he got the message. We gave him coffee. <laughs> uh, no, hey, I love our fans. I love their, their passion and their, their energy. That's not the first time I've heard around the ball. Um, and you know what? And we, we do need to run, we do need to continue to try to run the ball. Um, and so, no, I'm, I'm not surprised by, by that. And I, and I appreciate their, their energy because I know that same energy of those guys uh, sitting out there this morning when I drove in. Uh, they're going to have that same energy when they're, when they're cheering us on in the stadium. And I'm thankful and grateful for that. Got him coffee. You kidding me? Take a knee and welcome to Bird's Huddle as we huddle up. Powered by points bet. A fanatics experience along with Dave Zangaro, Barrett Brooks. I'm Michael Barkan. Do the Eagles need to run the ball more or do they only need to run it more effectively? Barrett, Dave? Yes and yes. <laughs> yes and yes. The more you run the ball, you just have so many things that it, it, it – that it takes care of, you know, time possession. It can work the time possession. It can work the physicality of the game. It gets your offensive line going in the right direction. There's so many things that it does. You know, you impose your will when you're running the ball. And when the defense can't stop you from running the ball, that's when you know you have them. You know, that's when you, you can take their heart and just crush it after that. But you got to be able to go out there and do it. Just, just, just run the ball. Do they lose sight of it during the game? Is it not in the game plan to that extent, or do they just abandon it? Well, I mean, it wasn't working against the 49ers. I mean, those two things, run the ball effectively and run it more, they go hand in hand. If you run the ball effectively, then you're probably going to do it more, right? It just makes sense. And I'm picturing Barrett out there tomorrow morning. Just yeah. with a sign and some free coffee. That's not a bad way to... I only want hot coffee. I'm bringing my own iced coffee. <laughs> to go about it. Uh, yeah, look, I, I think that this ha the Eagles had the offensive line to be a really good running team. I, I think Jalen Hurts has the potential to make them a really good running team. And, and they have the running backs to do it, too. But I, I don't think it has to be this mindset of, man, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball all the time. They have really good pass catchers, too. I, I think at times you have to find a balance. I think they have to run the ball more effectively. To me, that's the bigger key here. That's why we got our ass, I mean, our butts kicked. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Here's no, they the got their butts kicked because they gave up six touchdowns in a row. Because yeah. they got their butts kicked starting the game. You, it's, it's an attitude running the ball. I don't know the attitude when they threw the ball and got down into the red zone on those first two drives wasn't too bad. Although, it wouldn't have made a difference had they scored touchdowns in that red zone, do you? You think so? Oh, but for sure. It changes the dynamic of the game if you're up 10 nothing or 14 nothing. Yeah. I think that Sam Fran might have shook it off anyway. <laughs> Maybe, but it gives you a fighting chance. Here's the injury report for today. The good news for the Eagles is reinforcements are on the way. Dallas Goddard listed as a full participant at practice. He will play Sunday. Linebacker Zach Cunningham listed as limited at today's practice. And, of course, Shaq Leonard will make his Eagles debut Sunday. Taryn Hatcher has the bird's eye view from the Nova Care Complex. It's presented by Ocean Casino and Resort, Atlantic City. Well, the Eagles are headed down to Dallas with reinforcements in tow. A new face, Shaq Leonard, on the defensive side of the ball and a familiar face in Dallas Goddard on the offensive side of the ball. And for Shaq Leonard, when it comes to adjusting to a new team and new terminology ahead of one of the most hyped matchups of the season, well, he says he's just trying to keep things simple. It's, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> you, know, it's, you know, the mind hasn't stopped yet. Um, you know, for one, just meeting everyone and then, you know, trying to learn the terminology of the defense. And uh, I'm just trying to study as much as I possibly can. And, you know, you got to learn the game plan. So it's just been a little crazy, but, you know, I'm grateful and thankful for it. You know, I, it is what it is. You know, I just feel like, um, you know, playing against whoever, uh, not too, not trying to make it too big or too small, just try to take it one game at a time. That's my job is to come in, you know, whatever coach needs me to be. You know, that's what I'm going to be. Um, you know, one, you know, just experience. I think that I, I can, you know, help that out. You know, just, you know, what I see on the field or on the sideline, whatever the case may be, and you know, just be the best teammate I could possibly be. And Dallas Goddard is excited to get back in the mix, especially in that atmosphere down in Dallas before one of potentially the most important games of the season for the Eagles.
Well, obviously, I don't want to miss any games, but uh, this is a, a big game. Uh, it's really fun going down to Dallas every year and playing in a, a fun environment like that. So I'm really excited to get back. And, you know, Dallas and Dallas has a ring to it. So uh, really glad that I'm able to go and, uh, you know, kind of put everything else to bed and get out there and play football again. So Goddard says he'll be ready to go, though he will be sporting a pretty large scar on that forearm. But he said he thinks it looks pretty sick. So finding a silver lining in everything. From the Novacare Complex, Taryn Hatcher, NBC Sports, Philadelphia. He's got a plate and he's got screws in there. Dallas and Dallas. Time for three-point stance. Number one, Dallas Goddard will help solve a lot of offensive problems. Dave? Yeah, I mean, he really is going to fix a lot of this. And it's not like he's a magical cure-all, but uh, he's a reliable option for Jalen Hurts when things break down, or even just to have him in the progression because there hasn't been anyone else stepping up into that third pass catcher option for the team. I mean, it's really been A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith the last three games. So having him in the pass game will help. And then in the run game where, you know, we talked about running the football more and more effectively, well, he's a really big key to that. Uh, it, it kind of, you know, I was talking to Jordan Mailata a little bit today about this. He makes the Eagles offense so much less predictable because when he's out there, they can very well run it on you or they can throw and, and he can leak out and, and make some big plays with catching the ball and then yards after catch. So uh, it's kind of weird because they haven't used him to the level I really expected all season. But when he's not there, you really remember how important he is to the offense. Like last week. Barrett, how do you think we will notice his presence specifically Sunday night? It's simple. In between the hashes, the middle of the field, he's going to roam around those, those hash marks, and they're going to have to account for him. And he'll be in the number count, and he's just another weapon that they can use in the middle of that field that they haven't been using the past two weeks. Yeah, A.J. Brown looked so excited. I asked him about Dallas Goddard today, and his eyes lit up. He's like, yeah, finally, someone else to help take the pressure off of me and Devontae because those guys get all of it from opposing defenses. Uh, speaking of defense, Shaq Leonard added to the roster, and it looks as if Zach Cunningham will return as well. We also note that Christian Ellis is cut to make room for Shaq Leonard. Number two, stance number two, the Eagles will get better linebacker play on Sunday. If not, you know, just having Zach Cunningham back, you know, him, his presence being there, we need that. He's played the best out of all the linebackers this year. So just having him in the fold just gives us a better opportunity to guard the middle of the field. You see the theme? Middle of the field on offense and on defense. So, yeah, I think that, you know, having Zach Cunningham back will be a major, major key. And if we can get anything out of uh, Mr. Leonard, I I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I I'm, I'm – cautiously optimistic about what Shaq Leonard can provide. I think there's a reason he was available, but um, the baseline was pretty low. I mean, it was a bad game for the linebackers last week in a game where you know, the 49ers have all the tools in the world to expose a uh, shaky linebacker play, and they did that. Uh, but I, I, I think Barrett's right. Having uh, Cunningham back in this game will help. He's been their most consistent linebacker. And it's kind of fun to have two linebackers with these super long arms yep, in the yep. middle of the field. They're really going to get in some passing lanes. And if they tip a few balls, I mean, I think that would really help his defense. Stance number three, David Carr has no clue. The former first overall pick turned NFL network analyst had this hot or perhaps insane take on Jalen Hurts last night. Clearly, Jalen isn't comfortable reading through a defense in a drop-back pass scenario. Some would say he's not even good at it. And I think that when you look at this team, you have to have a serious conversation if you're Philly. And you have to really say, is it better for us to play Marcus Mariota right now and let Jalen get really? fully healthy? Ooh. Because I would argue that it does not matter if you're the number one seed. Because if the 49ers come into Philly again, <laughs> they do not care. Interesting. Dolphins going to... A bench Tua and the Niners are going to bench per. You know what do you what do you think? I I mean it's ridiculous. What? Huh? <laughs> Did, what? Yeah. Are you kidding me? It doesn't make any sense. And look, if he said this a month ago when Jalen was visibly limping back to the huddle, like maybe maybe you sit him down. No, that's when you say for, for a game or he two. He is reading defenses when he was beating teams with his arm and reading the defense. So I, I'm I'm just like you. What he said. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like that's the thing. If, 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 if it was all health related, like okay, but to say he can't read a defense tells me you're not watching this team play. Like maybe he's not the greatest pocket passer ever and maybe he's not reading defenses as well as some of the 
great quarterbacks ever, but like. Ran in a touchdown to beat the we, Bills. What are we good. talking about here? This dude is in the MVP conversation. And to say that the number one seed wouldn't matter if Jalen isn't healthy, but if you get the number one seed, you get a bye week to let him get healthy. It's why they played him at the end of the year last season. And none of that made any sense. Not, not, I mean, it just – Yeah. Fork tongue, doesn't know. He just, I think we've spent too much yeah. time on it already. Right. Right. Okay, yeah. that's enough then. All right, that, that, no that. clue. Much more birds huddle ahead. Here's the playbook, and we'll play some Believe It or Not ahead of Sunday's showdown with the Cowboys, including who will have a bigger day, C.D. Lamb or A.J. Brown? And have your expectations for the Eagles wavered at all following Sunday's loss to the 49ers? We'll discuss.